Chaos and evil have befallen us. The great Draken, source of universal magic, has been usurped. You and your companions must confront the ruling dragon princes to restore world peace. Ancient prophecy warns of dangers not yet borne by mortal men, but you must not be deterred. Your wit will be tested and your lives are at risk every moment in Draken. Behold, an entirely new dimension in sight and sound, 3D. Never before have RPG adventures been so grippingly real, so breathtakingly vivid. It's time to stop playing games. Are you bold enough to accept the challenge? And thank goodness that Kemco and Seika gave us Draken in 1991 because we didn't have any 3D before that. It's true, everything was two-dimensional and then this game happened. Draken is an early 3D Western role-playing game initially developed for the Amiga and Atari ST and subsequently reported to several other platforms including DOS and, DOS and the Super NES. It was a very, er, very early game excuse me, on the Super NES and as such received almost universal coverage in previews of the then upcoming SNES magazines of 1990 and 91. In February 2018, the DOS version of the game was made available on Steam and 2018 on GOG.com. Draken was notable for being among the first role-playing games to feature a three-dimensional playing field and for being entirely uh, an early example excuse me, of real-time tactics. It did not employ a fully 3D game engine, however, instead implementing a hybrid approach using vectors and bitmapped char character scaling algorithms. Excuse me. Draken features an animated day-night cycle, the ability to wander freely about the game world, both rarities for games of this area. It spawned a sequel, Dragon View, for the SNES. I used to own this game, and I could never really figure it out. It's a little complicated. It's a little weird. It's got a lot of point-and-click aspects to it. I mean, it's not terrible. Uh, I just couldn't figure it out. Now, Dragon View, I have played, and Dragon View is quite a bit different, um, but it is still pretty fun. Uh, we may freely travel the entirety of Draken's game uh, not long after beginning a game. This can be unwise in practice though. Chance encounters with hostile monsters are regular and unlike many other RPGs we may be attacked when stationary. All battles against foes are automated by default but allow the player to micromanage their four combatants. The player is given more time to focus on the real-time tactics of each enemy encounter such as activating defense magic, moving around, or switching weapons on the fly. The party may also be accosted at night when viewing constellations in the sky, or any time after bumping into a half-buried urn. We may attempt to flee, but defeating foes grants all party members experience that go towards leveling up and improving stats. Each of the four characters have health points, magic points for spellcasting, power defense, physique, fortune, intelligence, knowledge, and agility. Each stat listed has a direct effect on how the character plays. Character stats are assigned by the player at the start of the game using a cap and trade system. Each party member fills one of the four roles, scout, wizard, fighter, and priest, which different, each with different strengths and abilities. Items can be purchased from traveling merchants who ambush the party or at a tavern and are categorized as armor, weapons, healing items, rings, and miscellaneous. Past castles can be revisited at any time, which themselves act like temples found in the Legend of Zelda game. Castles are self-contained levels with obstacles, loot enemies, and a maze-like architecture. Some standout enemies are enormous and imposing, such as the black stationary canine heads that rise out of the ground and growl while shooting bolts of lightning from their eyes in the event that the player kicks one of the many urns. These encounters are quickly fatal to new players who don't know any better. They offer no experience points, suggesting that kicking an urn is frowned upon by the game. And another notorious difficult enemy is the Shadow Man, a tall figure that can unexpectedly emerge from the ground accompanied by an ominous tune. Enemies of this power are usually far from the starting area, but are nevertheless accessible to unsuspecting players. The game contains over 100 different enemy types, including all variants of the Draken Soldier. In general, the Super Nintendo version is drastically different to the point of being more than a typical port. Predating both Ultima Underworld and Eye of the Beholder, Draken was among the first action RPGs to utilize excuse me, a permanent real-time text adventure log window demonstrating large influence from MUD games. The log functions like a dungeon master, frequently telling the player how much damage an attack did, explaining the outcome of intended actions, acting as a five senses, and etc. The feature was de-emphasized for the Super Nintendo. The computer versions made heavier use of the adventure game buttons within castles to solve deeper and more plentiful obstacles. Uh, the originals were criticized for lack of a compass, which the SNES developers took to heart when they made changes to the new version. It doesn't use a visual compass, but instead tell the players uh, which of the 360 degrees he or she is facing any time the game is paused. Computer versions allow for greater nuance when traveling the 3D island, paying it 
playing to the strength of utilizing a mouse cursor, while the SNES uses the control pad, as such moving is somewhat clunkier. A uh, story, short story collection that came with the game, aside from expanding the story of the game itself, also incorporated clues as to what the player needed to do, what enemies would be difficult, and other such context that the player was expected to know before playing, which is why I did so poorly. The Super Nintendo re-release didn't come with the supplemental book that was written by Gary Gygax, that's an interesting name, who had a hand in designing the gameplay and story of the original, as well as many enemies. The exclusion was likely because the game story was entirely rewritten, which nevertheless rendered the Super Nintendo version without the context necessary to experience the game the way the developers intended. The Super Nintendo version has far fewer NPCs. Fleeing any battle in the Super Nintendo is as simple as tapping L and R, which makes all battles outside castles entirely optional and doesn't give enemies time to attack. The interface was changed to utilize visual means to more quickly communicate ideas, and the clutter originally covering the left half of the screen was con condensed to the bottom. In the original two versions, crossing the borders between continental divisions would require a wait while the game loaded. In the SNES version, crossings are instantaneous. However, if you try to cross an area befew, uh, before the few, first few story beats, they are sharply rebuked. The storyline for the Super Nintendo game is a result of a broken translation and rewrite of the original, as well as a lack of supplemental stories. Draken was developed by a French team, which was then translated into Japanese for the Super Famicom, which was then translated into English and further rewritten with help from the original French developers. To exemplify the telephone effect of all this, the original game contained a French translation of an Emily Dickinson poem, as quoted by a mysterious wizard, and that French translation of an English poem was translated further into Japanese for the Super Famicom, and then back to English from Japanese. The version of Miss Dickinson's poem that survived into the NES version of the game is almost unrecognizable and difficult to comprehend. I kind of wish it was written down there. According to the Super Nintendo game, a subset of humans known as, the, known as the Draconian people are presently doomed for the dragon gods of the four elements judge them as unworthy and are soon to put an end to their survival. Each god has a son and daughter dragon, prince and princess who rule the island of Draken. Draken himself is a fifth dragon god, one who the other four stole eight of the nine magic blue artifacts, or nine tears from, to do their cruel bidding upon the Draconian people. Four warriors stepped up to the challenge of proving their worth as a people to Draken. Their agreement is that if they can recover his eight tears, their people will be spared, and the four gods, their offspring, and the offspring's lizard people armies will all perish instead. Like in other versions of the story, some sons and daughters of the gods agree to help the player, even if it means they suffer extinction for doing so, demonstrating a deep selflessness. Pardon me. Draken was a commercial success with sales over 350,000 units, and Draken for the SNES attracted a modest cult following and was fairly well received by English game critics when the first released in 1989. The game was reviewed in 1990 in Dragon No. 160 by Hartley, Patricia, and Kirk Lesser in the Role of Computers column. The reviewers gave the game 4.5 out of 5. Editor Paul Rand of Computer and Video Game Magazine gave the original 83 out of 100, praising the music and graphics but found the value of the game to be lukewarm. He was also impressed by the imagination of the creatures and the sense of terror some enemies gave off. The German translation of the 1989 version of the game were met with mixed reception. Retrospective reception for the Super Nintendo version is very mixed, with many calling it confusing and unplayable by modern standards, while others find it appealing for its experimental nature, cryptic translation, and intense absurdities. I think I fit into that second category. I think it's a good game. I think it, it needs some work to get into and I tried a bunch uh, I just could never figure it out thankfully uh, good old Jade did a let's play of this and you can find it over at lowbiasgaming.net I hope to do the second game someday soon